Hey everybody, it's Andrew Embler, CTO of Concrete 5, and today I'm going to show you how you can modify the default view template for a core block type. Um, Concrete 5 makes it really easy to use different HTML than what's provided by the core block types in their view layers. Uh, so what does that mean exactly? Um, what we're talking about here is if I put a page in edit mode, I am currently mousing over instances of what we call the feature block. Um, that has an icon, a, uh, a headline, a description, and it can optionally link to a page. If I actually take a look at the HTML provided by the feature block, I can see sort of what the standard feature block markup is. So here we have the, C, uh, the class CCM block feature item. And you can see it right there. And inside there, there, excuse me, we have the icon, which is a font awesome icon pencil. Uh, we have a title, and we have the description. And if we move this over here, we can sort of see through Chrome's web inspector uh, where those hotspots are. And that is the complete output of a particular feature block. Um, and, you know, if you style your themes to use these classes, you're never going to have to worry about custom templates because. Uh, we've tried with 5.7 to make the themes really conform to a pretty pretty standardized convention in terms of how we n name classes. It usually starts with CCM-block and then the block type handle. And then it kind of proceeds from there based on the theme's particular, or the uh, template's particular capabilities. Um, however, you're not always working from a completely blank slate and working from the Concrete 5 uh, HTML. Many times you're going to find yourself either with HTML that was delivered with no idea, no concept of Concrete 5. Uh, maybe it's chopped by a web developer who's not really uh, concerned with our classes or doesn't know them or, you know, it, you haven't decided on a CMS when you've done the HTML chop and now you know you want to go with Concrete 5, but you have HTML and CSS that is completely unlike this particular standard markup. For example, check out this uh, particular theme. This is actually called uh, Enterprise. It's a very nice theme that I'm using as the basis for my personal site rebuild. I purchased this on Theme Forest. Uh, it's just HTML. I think they have other versions for certain CMSs. There's no Concrete 5 version. I am concretizing it as we speak. Um, and as you can see here, it has a very nice image slider. Um, you know, it's got a topics, it's got some titles, it's got a read more link, uh, it's got next and previous. And this is really functionally very similar to the image slider that you can see on in the elemental theme. You know, it's got a uh, it's got a next and previous button. Uh, we're not showing any titles here, but our image slider can have titles and it can have a link with the read more button. Um, so from a data model perspective, this is an image slider block. Now, if we actually take a look at the markup that this generates, it is completely unlike Concrete 5's image slider, uh, image slider block. Uh, I won't bring that one up right now, but you know, you're you're dealing with some very different classes, a completely different way of initializing the slider, probably a different slider library that's already being included by the theme. Um, so why would you want to add the Concrete 5 slider into this, into this theme and then you know, work with the theme CSS and JavaScript to completely port the way they deal with classes, um, the way they, you know, that might impact the JavaScript. It's going to be far easier if you just modify the output of the image slider block to conform to what this theme is expecting. And that's what we're going to do. So you can see my version of Enterprise is right here. It is uh, not very far along, but hopefully it'll be up soon in the, in the not too distant future. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drag a copy of the image slider block into the page. I'm going to put it in my featured slider area, which I have added. And then I'm just going to add in some content. We'll add in, whoops. We'll add in another entry down here. And 
and we will add this to our page. And once we exit edit mode, you'll see we have a functional slider. Unfortunately, it does not look like this. It is not anywhere close to as, as pretty. Um, it is pretty cool that the image slider JavaScript doesn't conflict with Enterprise's JavaScript, and uh, the CSS looks looks pretty decent. I mean, obviously, some of our markup is sort of conflicting with the markup in this theme, but it's really not the end of the world. However, there you know, since there is built-in image slider code that came with this theme, I figure I ought to replace the view dot or the view output of this image slider block with the one that came with the theme, just so I can get this nice. Uh, presentation. So let's do that. In order to do this, we are going to go into my web directory. Here we are. You can see I've got concrete in there. I've got a package for my theme that I'm working on. And I just go into application, blocks, and I make a new directory in here named image slider. And the reason I know that that's what I should be doing is because if I go into concrete slash blocks, you can see the image slider block is image underscore slider right there. And I will actually go into this directory and copy view.php. And go back into my own image slider directory inside the applications directory and paste view.php. Before I get too far into actually checking this, I want to make sure that my cache is turned off. So I'm going to go into the dashboard and I'm going to um, I'm going to make sure that my overrides cache specifically right here is off. Uh, the reason I need to do that is if you keep your overrides cache on, Concrete 5 saves the state of your file system, and it won't look in the application directory for overrides of the core if it doesn't know that they're in there. So when we turn this off, it will always look there, and then once we're done moving files around, we can turn it back on. So we'll head back out there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open the view.php, that I copied from the core. And you can see this is what Concrete 5 ships with for the image slider block. We've got our own uh, responsive slides JavaScript library. We've got some code up here that disables the image slider in edit mode. So from up here down to this else statement, we want to kind of keep that stuff in place because we want to keep it so that this will be disabled in edit mode just because that's usually a good idea when you're dealing with dynamic content on a page. However, from here down to here is a bunch of HTML that we don't really need to keep. What we need to keep are the sort of dynamic elements that come from the block controller. So this for each of rows, that's actually set in this view template from the image slider block controller. So we want to kind of make a mental note of what this code is doing. So right now that we know there's a link URL parameter that is actually adding a link to the page if it happens to exist. And we've got some code here that takes a file object which is passed in with row FID, which sort of usually stands for file ID. And we want to kind of keep aware that that exists and that there's this code here for generating an image based off of the file ID. Um, and then there's a title and description down here. So we kind of, we're going to need to keep that data around, but we're going to need to, we're going to want to wrap it in new HTML, basically. So in order to do that, we can grab our HTML. And I've already set this aside because I knew I was going to be doing this. And this HTML happens to correspond with the HTML from my enterprise theme that I downloaded from ThemeForest. So if we actually look at the index.html, this file right here that we're rendering here, if I search for slider, I can find it down here. This is the content right here that controls the animated slider 
in my theme. So you see we've got some images, we've got some data animations, we've got some titles, and this is how they structure their markup. So what we usually do then is we just take this exact thing here and we massage this HTML into the format that our image slider view template requires. And that's exactly what's happening here. So you can see instead, this is the old template, instead of our responsive slides JavaScript that we have from up here, we now use this function which came from my theme. Now we did pass our block ID to this and we are using that to handle the ID down here. Um, but instead we've got you know a bunch of classes that came from our theme. This is not Concrete 5 specific stuff here. Now here we are dealing with the rows parameter that came in from our controller. And we loop through, we get a file object, We've got the same code here that actually makes an image tag. Um, down here we've got um, down here we've got um, the title and description, and we've got the read more link using our link URL. And you'll notice we've also got travel and photography. Well, that's because this template travel and photography that came uh, this this particular image slider has sort of topics at the top of each thing, in addition to a title and a read more. Um, we could handle that with a description. We could just omit it. We don't, have a, we don't have data for that in the image slider. We could also extend the image slider later on to store an additional parameter, but that's sort of outside the scope of what we're doing today. So I think what we're gonna do instead is we're just gonna delete this line because our image slider doesn't really have that data available. So now I'm going to copy my sort of uh, pre-made Concrete 5 version of this custom template into the overriding custom template that we have here. So now, if I refresh this, we should no longer have my broken custom template. Instead, we have a pretty image slider. And if I actually edit this to link somewhere it's got the read more button which takes me right there so now you can see that it's just that easy um, we've got an image slider and anytime we use this image slider in uh, in this theme it will use the custom view template that I have provided at my application directory. And I don't have to worry about reworking CSS or any anything like that. And you'll, you'll probably find yourself doing this a fair amount as you work with HTML that someone who is not actively looking at the markup that Concrete 5 generates um, is making this HTML. You're gonna find yourself reworking core block types to use their HTML. And that's totally fine. The way I've shown you makes it so that you can do this without forking the core and everybody's happy.